Hi everyone. Well, one of the things uh, that we're seeing in technology more and more is the use of different technologies in the same circuit, how they affect each other. Now, for example, in uh, you mimic power designers out here, we have on the left in this 3D picture uh, a simple one-stage uh, mimic, and that is on a uh, module. You can see the bond wires coming off the mimic onto the module through uh, various interconnect. We have some um, surface mount chips on here. And we need to simulate all this. So we have a number of challenges because besides uh, all the traditional power amplifier nonlinear simulation challenges, we have a lot of interconnect and we have different technologies. So we've got boards, we've got chips. How do we deal with this? Well, fortunately in microwave office, it's rather nicely set up to deal with multiple technologies. Uh, what we do is, of course, we first of all have multiple libraries. And this project has a chip library for the Mimic, and it has a board library or a module library uh, for the rest of the circuitry. Uh, the software is smart enough to use both of those. Any given schematic will use one or the other technology. Now here we are at the highest level of this circuit, and what I'm going to do here is pick the uh, packaged amp and push down into it. And what we're seeing at this level, uh, and this would be at the board level, uh, we can see these bond wires here. And this little symbol, this sub-circuit, is actually the mimic. So if I push down uh, once more, we now are at the level of the mimic itself. And uh, you can see it's very simple. This, of course, is using the Mimic technology. So the software allows you, uh, in various levels of hierarchy, to be using one technology or the other. Uh, if we go ahead and uh, simulate, which just takes a second. Uh, I won't bother to do it because I've already done it here. Uh, let's just take a quick look at a, a couple simple results to show you how things are looking. And what we have here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change this a little bit. And here we go. And what we've got now is the red curve is the gain uh, of the chip coming off the chip uh, onto the board and on out and the output power is the blue curve. So kind of what we can expect, we can see it starting to go into compression as we get to powers at about 15 dBm input power. So pretty standard stuff. Again, the point being we can simulate both technologies. Now, another thing we can do, of course, is we can run EM simulation. And one of the advantages uh, in the software is you can actually pick off various parts of the layout and through something called the extraction flow, you can actually uh, just send those to EM automatically without having to redraw them. In this circuit, for example, in the mimic, you might want to send out the um, spiral inductor on, on the chip uh, to Axiom, our planar solver, to give a, a better answer than the model. What I'm going to show you here, which is new in V12, is we also now can actually send uh, some of the um, structures out to Analyst through the extraction flow, Analyst being our 3D EM simulator. So let's take a look at that real quickly. And so the way we do that is if we come here to the package damp and you see these bond wires in the schematic, and I select those, uh, that's an extraction block I just clicked on. And those bond wires have been selected for extraction along with part of the amplifier. And in particular, we're going to extract the ground plane of the, anal uh, of the amplifier and the pads, which we would need. And I'm going to go ahead here and look at the 3D. And what I'd like you to notice is the bond wires have turned red. So they're actually going to go out to 3DEM automatically. Uh, what you're not seeing here is these pads also will go out as well as the uh, plane underneath the uh, amplifier. Well, let me show you what went out to EM before I simulated in EM. 
And what will come out of it is this, and if we look at it in the 3D, this now is what analysts will actually extract. And you can see here we have the bond wires, uh, we have the pads. If I zoom in a little bit here on one of these pads, uh, notice this strap where my cursor is off port 1. That's a mathematical strap to tell the software analyst where its ground is, very important. And we're putting a voltage across that strap. And so the ground of these ports, of course, is the ground of the chip. Now another nice feature here is notice we also have, of course, the module. And you can see these ports, the mathematical strap, is referenced to the ground plane of the module. So this is all taken care of in the EM simulation correctly. Well, at this point, if I hit the simulate button, uh, it would run Analyst. And it's 3D finite element methods. It takes a bit of time, about two and a half minutes. It's not particularly complicated. Uh, however, we really don't want to be sitting in a video waiting for that to finish. And so let me show you uh, the finished results. And the answer is here, if I go back to this graph I showed you earlier, uh, you see the output power, and now if I um, enable the graph with the output power with the EM simulation of the bond wires, it's actually increased a little bit. And this is good, of course, because it's more realistic. But also the bond wires are adding extra parasitics, mainly inductance, which the designer of the chip uh, can use to advantage to compensate for and get a higher output power. Also, if we take a look at the gain, you'll notice the gain has gone up the purple curve over the old red curve. So by being able to simulate quickly uh, the 3D EM with the bond wires and the pads and the launch off the chip to the board, uh, the designer can uh, get a much more accurate answer uh, very easily because they're using extraction, don't need to redraw. Well, that's the end of the video, everyone. Again, I want to emphasize one of the nice features of microwave office for things like power amplifier designs is we can now work with multiple technologies, which is critical if you're going to get an accurate answer. The chip's important, as is the module and board it resides in, and it all has to be correct. Uh, and it's very easy now to look at all of those effects in one project.